If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of Romans. And uh, I'm going to be reading from the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8, beginning in the first verse. And you know, as the Apostle Paul, as he um, wrote to the church at Rome, and we see that you know he was writing to the Christians, he was writing to the church, and uh, we see how that uh, you know throughout the book of Romans, you know Rome was a place where there was a lot of uh, you know the, the the it was right in the very center of all the wickedness uh, because that's where you know the emperor was his palace was at and uh, all the things that was going on in the world uh, in the known world uh, you know had its epicenter right there in Rome. And so, you know, we see writing to the church there, uh, you know, there was a lot, of, a lot of problems, a lot of struggles. But we see that as uh, the Apostle Paul wrote there, and I'm going to read the first uh, 11 verses of this. And it says there, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is, is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwell in you. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' holy name, we come to you this morning. Lord, thankful for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we just pray that you would just be with us this morning in this service. I pray, God that you, uh, as we have read your word, that you have spoken to us through your word, and I pray that you would bless the reading of that word, and I pray that you would bless this message tonight, today. God, that it would be a message that would, uh, that it would just inspire. Father, that it would, uh, as uh, if there's one here that is lost, that it would condemn them, that they need Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, for those of us that belong to you, I pray that we would just realize, dear God, that the victory that we have in what Jesus Christ has done for us. And Lord, I pray that you would just encourage our hearts, speak to us now through your word. I pray that you would bless it, dear God, that as we uh, listen to what the Spirit has to say, Lord, that we would just begin to live a life walking close to you that we can serve you the way that you desire us to. Lord, we just pray now, be with us through the remainder of the service. I pray that you would be with me. Father, that this vessel that stands here today would be one that would be used in thee. God, I pray that you would just clear our hearts and our minds of anything and everything that, Lord, is without. And Father, that we would just be thinking about this right now this message. Go with us this morning, and Father, for everything that is done here, Lord, I pray it would be pleasing to Thee. 
And we ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. You know, as I read this and as I was studying this message this week and as I looked at these first 11 verses there in chapter 8, you know, I, I began to, uh, to, to read and to study and to think about what it has to say, especially in that first verse. And I believe that a person could probably, a minister could probably take that first verse there and make a whole message out of that first verse. Because there is so much in there. And you know, as we begin there, we see that Paul said, There is therefore now no condemnation. And as I thought about that, and, and, and I thought about what that has to say. You know, we see that we live in a world today, in a society today, where condemnation is on every hand. And we see that uh, as believers in Jesus Christ, there are many times when we see that condemnation and even uh, probably will uh, stand and bring condemnation on others. And, and we see that uh, others will bring that condemnation on us. But you know, we see that as you think about what this has to say, we see that uh, that. Paul said here uh, that there is now no condemnation. But he goes on and he uh, tells us uh, what he's speaking of there uh, or the reason that there is no condemnation. You know, we see that Paul said, as he goes on to, to, he says, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, as I was reading this and I was thinking about what that has to say there, what Paul was saying, he said that we as believers in Jesus Christ, and if you do not know him as your Savior, then, then as the, the Bible says, John, uh, John uh, 3, I believe it's 17 and 18 says that he came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But he said those that believe not are already condemned. And so, you know, we see that there are many people that uh, have uh, that condemnation upon themselves because they believe not uh, in the only begotten of the Father. And, you know, we see that those that are believers in Jesus Christ, we can say that we have no condemnation in our because now we are a believer in Jesus Christ. We can say that as we see what Paul said there uh, concerning this, he said that there is no condemnation in those that are in Jesus Christ. You know, we see in the New Testament as it speaks. You know, we see how that it says there that there is uh, many places where it speaks about those that are in Jesus Christ. You know, we walk in Jesus Christ. We stand in Jesus Christ. And, and, and it speaks about those that have gone on to be with the Lord. And how that they uh, sleep in Jesus Christ. And I believe that as we look at this and we think about what uh, Paul says there, <coughs> that we can see that even Jesus himself spoke about uh, those that are in him. Uh, you know, back over, and if you'd like to turn with me, uh, uh, we see that uh, back in, in the book of, of John, uh, in the 15th verse, or excuse me, in the 15th chapter of the book of John, we see that uh, as Jesus Christ was being about to be betrayed uh, by uh, Judas, that Jesus, as he speaks to the church, or excuse me, to his disciples, he said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband of And he says, in every branch in me uh, that beareth, uh, uh, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, uh, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it might bring forth more fruit. And as I was thinking about those that are in Jesus Christ, we see that Paul his, himself said uh, that we have been grafted in. 
You know, the, the church, uh, 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 the, the, uh, uh, in the Old Testament, as it speaks about uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Jewish people, uh, we see that those were God's chosen people. But we see that Paul said uh, that they have been cut off for a time, and we have been grafted in. Now, uh, Barbara and I, uh, uh, for several, several years, we had planted some apple trees, uh, and, and we would gotten some apple trees uh, uh, that they had taken, uh, and, and they had grafted a, a tree onto the roots uh, uh, of another type of tree, and, and they would do this uh, uh, so that the root system uh, would be strong uh, for those trees to, be, uh, to grow up and to be greater apple trees. And, and as I thought about that, and I thought about the application uh, of that, uh, you know, we see that, that application uh, there of uh, uh, that strong roots, uh, uh, that we see that Jesus Christ uh, is the strong roots, uh, and, and we that are of the, of the vines, uh, uh, we are, uh, or excuse me, are the branches, uh, uh, that Jesus is the vine, uh, we see that if we have been grafted on uh, as we have become children of God that we are uh, have a strong root system Amen. and that root system uh, is Jesus Christ Amen. and we see that uh, we uh, as believers in Jesus Christ and, and we see uh, in the last part of this uh, uh, chapter uh, and, and I'm not going to read that but it says that we are more than conquerors through him that loves us so you know we see that as we think about this uh, uh, first verse there, as it speaks, he says that there is no condemnation in those that, that are in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Jesus Christ, uh, uh, that you will not have to face the wrath of God. You will not have to face uh, uh, him that terrible day when uh, uh, the Bible speaks of uh, those uh, as they stand before him uh, and, and they hear uh, those awful words, the Apart from me, I never knew you. Oh, you know, I can, you know, I can just think about that, and it uh, uh, breaks my heart to, to think of those uh, uh, that will stand there, uh, and, and they will, uh, I think, because they went to church, uh, uh, because they did good works, uh, because uh, uh, they never did any harm to anybody, uh, uh, that God will allow them in uh, to heaven. But you know, the Bible tells us uh, uh, that there's only one way, and, and we see that it is through Jesus Christ uh, that we uh, uh, can have eternal life. You know, John, or, uh, uh, Paul said here in the book of Romans, as he, we go back to that, uh, you know, we see that he said uh, that there is no condemnation in those uh, uh, that, them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, uh, uh, but after the Spirit. Uh, uh, you know, we see that when we become a child of God, uh, we no longer walk as we once walked uh, uh, over in the 12th chapter of this book of Revelations. Uh, uh, you know, we see that he said in the second verse there, he said, be ye not conformed to this word, world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind uh, that you may prove uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, we see that when we become a child of God, uh, that our uh, life is uh, transformed uh, into something else. Uh, it is transformed uh, from being uh, uh, against God uh, for that then being in God, uh, or as it says here, in Christ Jesus. Uh, and, and he says uh, and, and that we not walk after the flesh, uh, but after the Spirit. And he goes on and he says, for the law of the Spirit of life uh, in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. You know, we see that uh, there's no condemnation uh, that we have is because uh, uh, that uh, we as believers, uh, we are not under the law uh, of the Old Testament, uh, uh, but we are now under grace. Uh, and, and because uh, uh, of the grace of God, uh, because of what God has done for us 
through his son Jesus Christ and his atoning blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary that we uh, can say that we are free uh, from uh, the sin and, and death. Uh, and, and then he goes on and he says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now Jesus Christ was God and he came uh, and he was born of the Virgin Mary uh, and we see the Bible tells us uh, that he uh, lived uh, for 33 years without sin uh, and he became sin for us. Yeah. That he, uh, as it spe speaks there, it says uh, uh, that uh, uh, he said, sending, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, uh, condemned sin in the flesh. You know, we see that because of what Jesus Christ has done, because he is the one who came and he lived without <laughs> sin and he took our sins upon himself on the cross of Calvary, uh, uh, that he is the one. Uh, who is able, he is the one uh, who can uh, condemn sin. And, and you know, we see the Bible says uh, that he is uh, the one, uh, the uh, first begotten, uh, and that he is uh, the one uh, that who has uh, forgiven sin. You know, he goes on there and he says that the, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. There again, we see again where he says that, uh, that we not walk after the flesh but after the spirit. You know, we see that as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, our life ought to be different uh, than the lives of lost people. Uh, our life ought to be something uh, uh, that people can see uh, uh, that we are believers in Jesus Christ. Amen. We see that, uh, as Paul says here uh, in the scripture, uh, you know, he said twice uh, that we've read uh, that he has made us free uh, from the law of sin and death. And, and that as he goes on there and he says uh, uh, that he is the one who condemns sin in the flesh. Uh, and then uh, uh, he goes on and he says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of, of the spirit. Uh, so as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, uh, we are to walk uh, uh, in the newness of life. We are to walk uh, uh, in uh, uh, being a new creation, a new creature uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and we see here uh, that Paul said to the church there uh, uh, that you need to walk this way. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, uh, you should be walking in the spirit uh, uh, that you uh, can, that people can see Jesus Christ in your life right. and that you as a believer, uh, I can draw close to him. Yeah. We see that he goes on there and he says uh, in this scripture, uh, uh, for to be carnally minded is death, uh, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You know, we see that Paul, as he speaks there to the church, uh, he says to them, uh, to be carnally minded uh, is uh, death. You know, over in uh, uh, the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, we see that uh, he spoke to the church there in Corinth uh, about being carnally minded. He said uh, in chapter 3, he said, And I, brethren, uh, uh, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but unto carnal, even as unto babes uh, in Christ. Uh, as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, uh, our life ought to be one as we walk in the Spirit, uh, uh, that it will draw us closer to the Lord uh, and and it will also uh, cause us to grow uh, as believers. Uh, to be carnally minded, uh, we will stay a babe in Christ. We will never grow uh, as he would have us to. You know, we see that he told the church there in Corinth, he said, I can't speak to you uh, under spiritual things. I can't speak to you under the things that you need to know. But he said, I, I have to speak to you under carnal because... You are as babes in Christ. He said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet are you able. He said, For you are yet carnal, for whereas you there is among you envy and strife and divisions, uh, uh, you are not uh, are you not carnal and walk as men. You know, we see what a sad commentary for the church in Corinth. 
We see how that Paul said to that church there that you're as babes in Christ and you're walking as the world walks instead of, instead of walking as you want to walk in the Spirit. And so, you know, he goes on there. He says, uh, for you to walk carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You know, we see uh, as those that are out in the world, those that are lost today, those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, uh, uh, they uh, uh, walk and, and their mindset is uh, uh, not a mindset of pleasing God. Uh, their mindset is not a mindset of doing what is spiritually right. Uh, their mindset is living to please themselves, uh, living to uh, uh, to uh, uh, live another day and do what they want to. Uh, and, and we see uh, that Paul said, uh, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Uh, uh, you know, we see that it is only uh, uh, when a person realizes that they're lost uh, and that they need Jesus Christ as their Savior uh, and that they... Uh, uh, then come uh, uh, repenting of their sins and invite Jesus Christ into their life and, and then uh, uh, they begin walking in that newness of life and, and they begin uh, uh, to, uh, uh, as they would walk and uh, they would uh, uh, walk and, and they would read the scriptures they would pray and, and they would begin drawing close to the Lord uh, whereas the Spirit begins to speak to their life uh, they uh, uh, can hear what the Lord has to say and, and they have that peace uh, you know we see that he said but to be spiritually minded is life and peace and then he goes on there and he says but the, because uh, uh, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God Oh, you know, we see that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. It is only when we come to that place, when we come to the place where we uh, surrender ourselves to Him, that we can please God That's with right. our life. You know, we see that He goes on, He says, But ye are not in the flesh. You know, talking to the church at Rome. He says, You are not of the flesh. And he says, But in the Spirit. So be that, uh, if so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. So, you know, we see that as believers in Jesus Christ, if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, uh, uh, we uh, are no longer our own. You know, we see that we have been bought. Uh, as it speaks uh, in 1 Corinthians, we've been bought with a price uh, and that uh, we uh, are no longer belong to ourselves, but now we belong to God. As I was saying, <laughs> excuse me, as I was saying earlier, we are in Christ Jesus. Uh, and, and therefore, being in Christ Jesus, uh, we uh, uh, do not look, walk and, and live uh, to ourselves any longer, but we walk and live to God. You know, we see that he goes on there and says, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of, the, of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Oh, you know, we see that Paul has told us over and over again that we have, uh, that this body has been quickened uh, uh, when we come to Jesus Christ. We've been made alive uh, by what Jesus Christ has done for us. <coughs> the lost person... That person who does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, they, their life is dead. Their life is dead uh, as they walk. You know, we see that it is only through what Jesus Christ can do for us that He has made us alive. You know, we uh, spoke of in, in uh, the, uh, our Sunday school this morning uh, about sitting in heavenly places with the Lord. All you know, we see that as believers in Jesus Christ, as we walk our daily lives, as we do our, uh, our daily routine, we see that we are walking in the newness of life and that our lives should be now <coughs> pleasing to the Lord. We see that he goes on there in verse 11 and he says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. 
You know, if, if God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and his son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross of Calvary and you believe that he was buried and he rose again the third day, then you have to understand that he can also, to us that are walking today, that we can be made alive, our lives can be quickened uh, by his spirit. You know, we see that that spirit... As we live each day, you know, uh, as I said just a little bit ago, you know, we went to a funeral uh, Friday evening to a, a dear uh, lady that had only given her life to, to Jesus uh, about 15 years ago. She was 80, I think she was 88 years old, and she gave her life to, to the Lord 15 years ago. But she, uh, even though that body was laying there, she was not there. She was with the Lord. Amen. You know, we see that as we as believers, you know, as we live and each day we get older and, and we think about, you know, we're getting older and, and what's going to happen, you know, is we're going to live for so many years and then we're going to die. Then we're going to pass from this world. But, you know, we as believers, we ought to be looking forward to that time when we're going to be with the Lord. Because we see that as we as believers, you know, we are just strangers walking through this world. We are not part of this world. We belong to Jesus Christ and we uh, are going to be with him. Oh, you know, we see that as Paul, as he wrote here, we don't have to worry about that condemnation uh, that the world has to worry about because we see that because of what Jesus Christ has done for us and as we have come to him and, and know him as our personal Savior, uh, uh, that we can say that there is now no condemnation in my life, that I, uh, I stand before him justified uh, and, and the way that I stand before God justified is is because the blood of Jesus has covered my sins. The blood of Jesus uh, uh, has made me uh, uh, to be uh, a believer, uh, has made me to be a child of God. So, you know, we see as we think about what this has to say today, as we think about what Paul told the church at Rome, we can be encouraged uh, as believers to know that there is no condemnation because we are in Jesus Christ. Amen. We abide in him and he in us. Oh, what a wonderful thought. And so, you know, we see that as we think about this scripture this morning, as we think about what it has to say to us, that we would just realize that he loves us and he died for us. He gave his only, his life for us. That we can have eternal life. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you would just wherever you're at. Just realize that. And accept him as your Savior. That he will come to you. And he will abide with you. If you will just come. Repenting of your sins. Believing that he is the Savior of this world. He will save your soul. From a pit of hell. And so today, I'd like for us to give a song of invitation. And as God has spoken to your heart, if you're here and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, then I want to invite you to come. If you're here and you know Him as your Savior, maybe you've not been living and walking in that newness of life, then I'd like to invite you to come as we stand and as we sing.